I get the question asked a lot, like, how do I define brand? How do I create a culture? And, you know, you guys have all had the opportunity to meet many, many different dealerships, you know, going to the conferences and stuff like that. And I'm sure you've probably seen the same pattern that I see is that, you know, happy staff creates for a happy yes. customer. And, Absolutely. you know, I'm kind of, you know, I want to get your guys kind of thoughts on a dealership out there that's trying to identify their brand. You know, how do they start developing that brand with their staff in the hopes that it'll eventually kind of spill off into mm -hmm. their customers? Uh, Lori, I'll start with you. And then Melanie, I'll yeah. ask you the same question. Yeah, I mean, I think that's such a good statement to make. It absolutely starts inside. And if you're treating your staff well, and they all are on the same page on what your brand is and how you treat your customers, then that's absolutely going to relate. Um, one of the dealership groups that I've worked with that does a really nice job at this is Lithia Motors. They really, I mean, they are a huge dealer group, and yet they've been able to create a brand that has been able to work across the dealerships that they've purchased and acquired. And I know personally that a lot of that is from going, they go in and teach that brand and say, this is the way that we want you to uh, respect the customers. This is the way, like for instance, just kind of one uh, example of like having a staff based thing. They do a women's leadership group like once a year for a week. And it's all about women and it's internal for the staff. But I mean, what a way for a dealership to show that they support and value the women that work for their company. So I think things that you can do internal for your staff like that, like a women's leadership group. I've heard a lot of women who talk about um, companies. In fact, Melanie, this may be celebrity. So tell me if this celebrity is one that does this. But like uh, someone was telling me their dealership gives out um, like we'll buy VIP boxes and then give out game day tickets to the employees and their family to go enjoy a day. And they've said that makes such a difference. Like that's that one small thing for them makes it for that dealership. And so, you know, I think going back to your original point, the better you can treat your staff and the happier they are to work at your dealership, that's going to show through to the customers that come through the door. You know, I agree with you. I, th I think, though, for a lot of dealership, it just sounds like a good idea, you know, right. and, and it's, it's what I feel like they have to process it because if it's not a, a solid in stone developed process, then, you know, it's, it's just another good idea. I mean, you know, the, um, the, the women's development events, right, if that wasn't mm -hmm. processed out and committed annually, well, it right. probably would have only done one or two. And then it was like, yeah, you know, it's kind of a lot of work. I don't know. Like, right. You know? So, exactly. I mean, Melanie, for yourself, you know, um, creating that brand, I think there's a lot of processes that go into that. Do you guys have some of that type of process on, on how you treat the staff and kind of ensure, I guess, staff happiness? Yes, we definitely do. So at our Alpha Romeo and Maserati dealership, we have something that is truly unique in the auto industry and we have a full female staff. So from the management team down, we have a female GSM, we have a female finance director, we have a female service manager. And it's something that is truly unique that the owner here has been promoting women within the company. So I think when you talk about, you know, internal culture, I know that Previous to me working at a dealer group, I had no desire to work at in a, in a retail environment because I thought that I would not be able to, as a mother to two children, be able to manage the hours and to manage life and be able to do it. And what I discovered is that I actually work for an organization that is so family friendly and so family first. And, you know, if somebody has to take a kid to a doctor's appointment, if you have to pick your kid up from school, if something happens at the, at the dealership, it's not a problem. You go and take care of what you need to take care of. If your nanny can't come, if something happens, my kids come with me to the office. So it's, it's internal culture that kind of flows out and it's, it definitely humanizes working in a dealership. And I think that if more dealerships, you know, across the nation and in Canada, if they were more family friendly, you would attract better talent. And I do believe as far as women goes to people would feel much more comfortable working, 
you know, longer hours. They know that if something happens, that family is number one always. And that's something that I don't see a lot of, and it exists within the organization that I work for. I also think if you're coming from a brand perspective in terms of, you know, trying to have more of a community outreach to kind of interweave that into the messaging of your dealership Mm -hmm. or your business and make sure that, you know, when it's bring your kids to work day, that that's, you know, highlighted on your blog and it's on social media and, you know, have family type activities in the service department. So when your kids are with you, when you're getting your car service, you can have coloring books and puzzles and things that have the brand's car on it that they can color on. So I think definitely creating that culture internally is just like little tweaks and process. Well, you know, it's it's little tweaks for some and for others, it's monster, monster changes. And for an industry that doesn't typically change quickly, <laughs> it, it can be a pretty big deal.